faithfulness in Jesus. 
Having a lot of testimonies. God touching people, healing them, and blessing them. There is another day to bring you God's word. And to now we are going to be sharing on how to resist sicknesses and diseases. We want to welcome everybody watching by television and TV so. on all social media platforms. We are blessed today to have two great men of God with us to help us expand the word of God. The Bible said that he sent his word and heal them. So healing, deliverance comes through the word. And so we are so blessed to have Pastor Ernest Davis in the house. God bless you, Apostle. Amen. Always blessing us with insightful revelation. And also we have Reverend 
Praise worship in the house. Great man of God. Here, they are here to help us. Expand the way. And so today, we are going to be speaking about Jesus. What he has done. And as a result, we have the power to resist sicknesses and diseases. We are so blessed with the song that the choir gave us. Speaking about the fact that he is Jesus. All the songs were very powerful. And we thank God for them. And so today we want to read Isaiah 53. Verse 5 and verse 7. Talking, he said, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now, this scripture suggests something. Jesus was sacrificed for our sins and to take away our sickness. Now, John the Apostle, the closest disciple to Jesus, help us to understand certain revelations others did not have. In John 1, 29, John the Apostle, Presented Jesus in another form. The Bible reads it so beautifully. He said the next day. John seeth Jesus coming into him. And said. Behold. The Lamb of God. We take it away the sins of the world. Now notice the word. The Lamb of God. We take it away. We carry it away. The sins of the world. And what was he saying? We will understand that. He was speaking about Jesus as a substitute of something. He took away the sins of the world. What we were supposed to carry, Jesus took them away. Now, in Galatians 3.13, Paul the Apostle, writing to the Galatians, also brought a powerful revelation. Many call it the, the substitutionary work of Christ. Paul speaking, he said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. He made a curse for us. For curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. Now follow the scriptures carefully. Curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Now look at the next thing. That we might receive. That we might receive. The promise. Of the spirit. Through faith. And all the three scriptures. Is talking about something that was taken off. For something to come. Something taken off. 
for something to come. Now, let us read Isaiah 53 4 in the Amplified Version. What God is trying to teach us here today is that Jesus became a scapegoat for the believer. What was supposed to come on us was put on him. He took it away. And therefore, there is no legal grounds for us to carry pains and sicknesses which are the consequences of sin. And look at the amplifier. I pray that the Holy Spirit is going to help you to understand. The Lord said to me, I have not called you to debate theology, but to prove the power of God. So every man has his mandate. So we preach the word in simple terms. I look at the scripture. But he was wounded for our transgression. Beautiful. He was crushed for our wickedness. Our sins. Our injustice. Our wrongdoing. The punishment. Required. For our well-being. Fell on him. And by his stripes. By his wounds. We are here. Wow. Beautiful. He was wounded for our trans. Now, always check our, our. So, all these things were supposed to come upon us. He is the sinless lamb of God. A man without sin, of course, has no consequences of sin. Everything Jesus suffered was because of you watching me. Your bad thought, your lying, your stealing, your fornication, your, 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 all the bad things that we have been doing. And those things are the reason for sicknesses and disease. The wages of sin is death. And for many, sickness is the vehicle that takes them to death. So through sin, sickness came as the passport and the visa to carry you to death. But then Jesus came. Ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay. And the thing that was supposed to come upon us as a result of sin. I hope you know you are a sinner. That one, you don't, you are one. You are a sinner. You were born in sin. And you still live in a world of sin. It is by his righteousness that we live. And so there's no way any man can escape sickness, disease, and pain. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness. And he explains wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment that was supposed to come on us because of our wickedness fell on him and by his wounds we are healed. Glory to Jesus. Clap your hands for the Lord. So beautiful. So you see that's why when we stand before God we don't come with prideful hearts. Everything we have Came because Jesus became a substitute. And what has what we are sharing got to do with sickness? 
Very simple mathematical equation. If you go to school and you are punished for wrongdoing and somebody comes and they punish him in your place. Can they punish you again? No. Now when I was in school, there was this big guy called Tommy. He wasn't good at all. Everything zero. English zero. Math zero. Even history zero. But he was very big, huge. He used to live in the Amakom area. But he was good at receiving cases. Hey, case, he will receive the case until the teacher's eye will die. I remember one time there was a lady called Esiedu in the class. This is many years ago. You give her, you give her only one ship. She will scatter the whole class. She will cry, jump from here. So that before the Philippi, he will jump from one place and run and the teacher will be chasing her. So one day while that girl was manifesting, Tommy stood up and he said, Madam, give the rest to me. And Madam, come here. It was a new teacher. He didn't know the skills of Tommy in taking case. So this guy just turned himself like that. And the madam gave it to him. Madame gave it to him. No ball, no and then ball. he turned to look at her and say, have you finished please so I can go and sit The boy disgraced the teacher. She took what, is, what Mary Siedu couldn't take. Tommy took it so nicely. Beautifully. And so that day for the first time Mary Siedu was Allow to go and sit down. This is what Jesus came to do for us. He became our Tommy in the class. Now all the bad things that were supposed to come on us. Jesus took them away. Therefore, we can't carry sickness anymore. We can't carry pain anymore. In Leviticus chapter 16. 8 to 23. There is an Old Testament revelation that many have not checked. I'll just read a little portion. He said, Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goals. One lot for the Lord and the other lot for the Lord and the for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the lost Lord fell and offer him for a sin offering. Look at a sin offering. But the goat on which the Lord fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord. Make atonement with him and to let him go to escape God into the wilderness. And this is what they used to do. They will bring this gold and they will lay all the sins of the people on the gold. And they will release the gold to go into the wilderness. And when they do that, it means that all the sins and the punishment, the goat has carried them away. So it is called the scapegoat. It's what modern day English people have stolen from the Bible and they are using it in their language. Do the scapegoat is the goat that carries the sins and the pains and the punishment of others. So the goat is punished to stand in for others. And it's so powerful. So they call it atonement. He makes atonement for the people. The, the priest makes atonement over the scapegoat. You will lay the sins of the people. So the goat now carries the pain, 
the sin. That's what Jesus became a scapegoat for us. Therefore, every other thing the enemy wants to bring upon us, we have the right to say no. Because somebody, there's a Tommy somewhere who is not afraid of kings. He has received all the kings on our behalf. Beautiful. Clap your hands for the Lord. This is the state of the church. Jesus took what was supposed to come upon us and carried them away. Therefore, anytime the devil wants to put something on you, you have the right to say, hey, I resist you. You are, it is illegal. You can't put this thing on me. Because Jesus has been made a scapegoat for me, my sins, my sicknesses, my diseases, and my pain. Beautiful. This is why we celebrate Jesus. Now, sometimes when you say a Christian shouldn't be sick. Now, we didn't say he can't be sick. Listen. Because sickness has to do with his body. The body comes under so many types of attacks. Sometimes you are in a place the weather is not good. It affects your body. Sometimes you are too tired. Sometimes somebody gives you wrong food. Now, but the effect of all these things on us is because of sin. If not because sin came into the world, we will go through all these conditions and nothing will happen. Adam was in the garden. We never heard Adam was reported sin. So, the presence of evil makes it possible for these environmental conditions to affect our body. So we are saying, Understand when what we are saying carefully. When Christian can be sick, sickness can affect his body. Not your spirit. It can affect your body. Because the, your body is the container. Now question, who now has authority over his body? You have authority over your own body. Because God gave it to you. So you can decide to permit sickness. It doesn't matter. And you can decide to fight it. Because you have the authority. And you have the right. But I want you to choose to fight it. Because Jesus has already paid the price. He became our scapegoat. Therefore you can say so boldly. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to die before my time. This diabetes cannot kill me. This appetitis will not kill me. I resist you. I stop you. Jesus gave me that authority. By his wounds, I am healed. So that will stop right there. This sickness will not take me to the grave. I refuse to agree. I refuse to concur. I cannot let this sickness kill me. Because Jesus became my scapegoat. I no more carry the consequences of evil. It is your right. Take advantage and so tonight I speak to everybody watching in very simple terms don't let Jesus waste what he did for us rise up out of that sick bed keep fighting until you win you stop him today he doesn't so stop him tomorrow understand that sickness is not a blessing Sickness is not an inheritance. It's an oppression of the devil. He's using it to destroy many people. But, now let's take a look. It is an illegality. In Ghana today, somebody has a land. He even has the papers. And some people have demonic audacity to still come and struggle with you over the land. If you don't pursue 
you will be there, they will sell the land once you are sitting on it. What is that? Luciferian attitude. There are many people, they have devils inside them. So they don't care about legality. And when you meet such a person, you meet him boot for boot and two for two. Maybe you go to court and say, this is my paper. This thing proves that this property belongs to me. The same way you have to fight for your healing. You carry this book. The word of God. In Isaiah 53. 4 and 5. And you show it to the devil of HIV. And you said, even though I made some mistakes. And this sickness came to me. Jesus. Is my scapegoat. Jesus. It's my substitute. Jesus has carried it away. So, Mr. Devil, you have no right to put it on me again. Someone is getting healed right now. Someone is coming free from that affliction. I don't care the name of that sickness. There is a lady watching your name. Is called Agnes. You have a pain in your heart. Your heart beats so fast. Many times you feel like you are going to die. I see Jesus touching you. You are perfectly healed as I'm speaking. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Everything the devil wants to put on you. Somebody say, I refuse. Somebody say, I refuse. Because Jesus became my scapegoat. I pray that the church will understand this revelation. Now listen, the fact that you are sick doesn't make what we are saying false. Never. I may have even pains in my body as I'm talking. But it's the same Takashi useless thieves who go to somebody's land, even though they know that the land belongs to the person, they will still fight. You have to fight them back. To possess your possession. I see you fighting and you are coming out of that disease. You are coming out of that sickness. That your son will not die. That your daughter will not die. Lay your hands on their sick body. And rebuke that devil. And tell that devil. Jesus. Pay for me. Jesus. Carry my sins. My pain. My guilt. And therefore you have no authority. To put it on me. Give the Lord a shout of praise. In this it is so sweet. You understand the scriptures. And I like what John said. You hold the Lamb of God. Ah, yeah, yeah. We take it away the sins. We take it away their sicknesses. We take it away their pain. So anytime the name Jesus is mentioned, remember, he took away your poverty. He took away your pain. Took, some people say Jesus is a nice man. Please, he did not come here to show you his nice body. Jesus is not one of the models. No, no, no. He came for something great and something Better. Anytime you see him, look at him as John the Apostle saw. Behold the Lamb of God. See the Lamb of God. Recognize the Lamb of God. We take it away. My HIV. We take it away. My heart disease. We take it away. My hepatitis. We take it away. My coronavirus. We take it away. The curse on my family. He took away. Oh my God, my God, my God. The baradi boko shkata amyamabo. Rabi mosku para adiaga duske. Lord, help us to understand. Jesus is not just a religious leader. He did not come to entertain anybody. He hold the Lamb of God. We take it away. My sins. My pain. My disease. Devil, you have no right to afflict any child of God. Take your dirty hands off. I curse you in the name of the Lord. Leave every sick person alone. Everyone watching, leave them alone. Jesus has paid the price. You are a thief. 
you have come to steal, to kill and to destroy. You want to steal somebody's heart. You want to steal somebody's kidney. I curse you. Leave them alone. I really heal him. I release comfort. You have been arrested. You are the thief. And now we understand. See the Lamb of God. You take her away. The sins of the world. The sicknesses of the world. The diseases of the world. This is what gives out the boldness. People are confused when they hear some of us say, we refuse to be sick. They think that we are saying that because sickness never attacks us. But what we are saying, devil, we have our take it here. You can't stop us at the entrance. Now we are paying for this day. We are not dead crashes. We have the bona fide take it to enjoy total health, to enjoy healing. To enjoy total health. I look at this example. If somebody goes to the bank right now, so we'll be bank is here. The bank is closed. Bank in your tomb. A person may not have money in his pocket. That doesn't mean he's broke. Probably he owes more than half of the money in the bank. But maybe that's at the time that he got there. He didn't get access. But anytime the bank opens and he presents his documents, no security man at the bank gate. Even those people that have even 10 cities in the bank, you can't stop them from entering. Now listen to me. Jesus made you a partner. You are an inheritor. You are an hell of God. Everything he died for is for you. Everything he paid for is for you. Refuse to go down. Refuse to die. Refuse to be sick. He has paid. Behold, the Lamb of God. That scripture is so sweet in my spirit. We take it away. We take it away. The sins, the sickness, and diseases. So be healed. Rise up and walk. Get up once again. Don't say this is my sickness. It cannot be yours. Somebody took it away. Refuse to claim it. Say it a thousand times. He has taken away my sins and my sickness. I refuse to be sick. 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 And by his wounds, I am healed. This is how you resist the enemy. Glory to the name of Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. We honor you. We thank you for being our scapegoat. We thank you. I'm so blessed as I'm sharing this. Revelation. So beautiful. Let's turn to Pastor Ness to, to throw more light. On why we have the right to resist sicknesses. And Man of God, <laughs> tell us what the Spirit is leading you to, to share. Hallelujah. Amen. Daddy, thank you very much for hosting us again on your show. And uh, it's a great honor and privilege. And um, the subject that you're treating today. It's a very, very important subject. If only our online viewers and those who are watching us from their homes can pay attention to what you are teaching, I think for the rest of their lives, they will never experience sickness again. The scripture, that you have, the scripture you've quoted, John chapter 1, verse 29, Oh, it's too powerful. Say, behold. It means that where, where you are, if only you can look up. Mm. Mm. What the scripture is saying. Wow. You become what the scripture is saying. Mm. Say, behold, the lamp of God who took away. Wow. So it's, it's something that he has taken away. Wow. So if you can see it, mm. that he has taken it away, mm. so shall it be to you. Mm. That's a typical example like um, an insurance. Uh, most of the times, the reason why we see drivers fighting in traffic or <laughs> after an accident. 
because they don't understand that somebody has taken away the cost of that accident. So if only you two you can understand that Jesus has taken away that pain that cause of pain that cause of affliction if only you will understand it mm. you will be free praise God so what the subject that daddy is treating today how to resist the devil is how to resist sicknesses it's only about you seeing it you behold it it's in scripture Isaiah 53 mm. he said he has taken by his stripes you are healed and that is one of the things that I've realized about that scripture is anytime you look at the scripture the, the scripture is the same as it was so yesterday. Too fresh. So if that scripture healed you yesterday, and today you are being buffeted again with another sickness, you can go back to it. Oh, that scripture is still fresh. So fresh. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Powerful. Powerful. Oh, we thank God. What a glorious revelation. And like what as Ernest said about insurance. Africa, when you look at insurance, it's so it's humorous. You see drivers fighting, boxing one another, attacking people to pay. What the company has already made provision for. And as we're talking, it brought my mind back. I've never fought anybody. You scratch my car. I say thank you very much. Because I understand that it's not your job to pay. So Africa insurance companies are making big money. But by the ignorance of the drivers. By the ignorance of the drivers. Especially in the area of the those uh, the simple ones, all free for free for job. They will fight and box themselves. Meanwhile, there is an insurance sticker in front of the car. Even some of them, blood will come. When they are just supposed to go home and sleep and send the car to the company for them to repair. This is the state of many believers. Struggling for what Jesus has already paid. See, there must be a teaching revival in the church. There's too much noise without substance. There is a need for real understanding of scriptures. And that's why you have to listen to us. To understand. Because when you understand, you won't let the devil take you for granted. So we are going to go to Pastor Reverend Prince. Go so share. Open our eyes. We don't become drivers who fight in the streets. While the main, the main person that carries the thing away is that the provision is there. We are not enjoying the provision. So let's go to Reverend Prince. Let's listen to him. Share with us some to, to, to bring the revelation more light. Amen. Mm. Papa, thank you very much for this opportunity to be with you on this program. In fact, uh, as we were teaching, you know, it's like I've never heard those scriptures in the Bible before. Because they are coming to me as a new light, a new revelation. And one of the things that I was asking myself is that as simple as it is in the scriptures, mm. as we're explaining it, that the work that Jesus came to do, actually this is the work, to deal with our sins and take away our sickness. But Baba, as you treat it, that we have accepted 
the sense part of it. But the sickness part that has been taken away, it is difficult for the church to accept it. I quite remember when the church started. At a point, there was a certain woman who came around. And then already she had met some of the ministers, has shared her plea with them. And then I believe they had advised and given her some scriptural you know, strategies as to how to go about things. But the woman realized that the things that she was carrying and the things that she said, maybe the, the people didn't understand. So I was there when they brought the woman to me. And I also shared lights from God's word to this woman. And after I had exhausted whatever I wanted to say, for the first time, I thought, Charlie, I have dealt well with the scriptures to throw light for this woman to understand the situation. When I was done, she looked at me and she shook the head. As a man of God, you don't understand what I'm saying. I said, ah. Upon all that I said, I still don't understand your problem. I said, maybe your problem is beyond me. Let me take you to Bishop. So I went to our father and I told him about the situation. I took the woman there. And Papa spoke with the woman. I was there. And I saw that Charlie, the, the revelations were powerful. When Papa too was done, the woman accosted me on the side. And he said, you these people, you don't seem to understand my problem. Then I told her, please, then this problem there. After sharing with you this light from the scriptures, if you are not satisfied, then your problem cannot be solved. Then I began to, I mean, think about it. What was the woman's problem? Her problem was to not be able to accept the finished work of Jesus. So Isaiah 53, from 5 going, is showing us what Jesus has already done all that we need it to accept it that in as much as he has taken our sins away so has he also dealt with our sicknesses so if you have been plagued with any sickness in your body and it's still there up to today it's because you have not accepted the healing work of Jesus it has already been paid so all that we are throwing light on tonight is for you to see the finished work of Jesus and just accept it just as it is and your healing will come to you speedily in Jesus name Beautiful. amen clap your hands for the Lord hallelujah amen. so you have the right to resist so now we will we'll show you how to resist. Now, in Luke chapter 13, Jesus, Jesus did Christ something so. in the church. That's why I was saying that a Christian must refuse to be sick, but they can be sick. So Christ, but well, we carry the same body our body didn't get born again it's the same old body that we used to have when we were a sinner mm. what are you supposed to do you have to now take the authority of your new regenerated spirit to control yes, this old body look 13 verse 10 the Bible said Jesus was teaching in one of the churches on the Sabbath day. Look at it. And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity from the Greek word, the spirit of sickness for 18 solid years and he was bound together and could in no wise lift herself. Another version says he was bowed double. He was his body, he was twisted double. Now look at when Jesus saw her. This time it's not the woman that ran to Jesus. 
when Jesus saw the sick in the church he called her to him and said unto her woman thou art loose from thine infirmity even that without the woman requesting for healing now the Bible says verse 13 so he laid his hands upon her that's one of the ways to resist sicknesses he laid your hands and said devil take your hands off my body in the name of the Lord Jesus he laid hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorify God. Number one, Jesus resisted the sickness by a word. Woman, thou are loose. And then he lay hands. And the woman immediately got healed and glorify God. Now, there were some religious people who began to criticize. Verse 14, the other the ruler of the synagogue and said with anger, because Jesus has healed on the Sabbath. Day. Instead of rejoicing for the healing, they were into so much religious religion that they didn't care about the pain the woman was going through. They would rather care about the day. One of the last day deception is people putting so much value on systems and methods than the real thing that Jesus came to do for us. Some are even trying to say if you don't do some things in a particular day, then you are not saved. No, it's not a day that saves us. It is his blood, resurrection, death and resurrection that brought us salvation, not a particular day. These people were particular about the day. They said, come and be healed at another day, not on the Sabbath. Verse 15. The master answered them. The creator of the day and the night answered them. He spoke to them and he rebuked them that you are hypocrites. The woman is more important than the day. Then in verse 16, a very powerful revelation. If you are eating, stop and listen carefully right now. Stop whatever you are doing and listen carefully right now. Jesus said, this is the, the, the pivot point of what, this is, this is, the, this is the, the secret card that gives you authority to resist sickness. He said, Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? Yeah, Abraham Asini. Look at it. All. So the point is that the daughter belongs to someone. And because it belongs to someone, the devil has no right to molest her because he doesn't belong to the devil. Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound. Remember, he came to steal what does not belong to him. For this 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Now let's read it from the Amplified. Let's say Jesus is telling you something. He's laying on emphasis on the spiritual truth. That there is a family. When you belong to that family, sickness must not be permitted. And that is the Abrahamic family. That is being born again. That is being a child of God. He said, and this woman, I like this one, a daughter, descendant of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years. Should she not 
have been released from this bond on the Sabbath day. So you should, should, should have been here longest time. So what is the key here? The seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham. Listen to me. The day you became born again. If you are not a believer, your problem is different. We'll solve it. But the day you became born again, you were given a right to enjoy whatever pertains to the Abrahamic family and one of the inheritance in the Abrahamic family is that we are sickness free we are pain free we are disease free so he was telling them hey if this woman belongs to the devil no problem he can be 18 Yes, times three. But this particular woman is the seed of Abraham. He shouldn't be sick. She, she's not supposed to. That's why when I saw her, I must release her immediately. Because she's carrying something that does not belong to her. Oh, give the Lord a shout of praise in this place. So Jesus is talking to you. Don't allow him. Don't allow the devil. You are the seed of Abraham. You belong to Abraham. And those that belong to Abraham, your sins have been paid. Your sickness is paid. They are not supposed to. Ignorance can keep them there. And they are not supposed to. Now, let me finish it with this story. A woman was walking by a roadside. One hot afternoon. Carrying a baby at the back. And the tongues of load. She was coming from the farm. One baby at the back. Another one with the hand. And carrying so much load. Wood, firewood. Tomatoes, this tomatoes, and sweating by the rosa. Now, what team fifty were quam? And as she was walking, a brown one anti chrono, a man came, but baby by with a car, for the car by air condition, air condition, sound system, a not drum way boat team womb. He saw the woman, and no, who no, mamma, no, and stopped, and no, genai, and said, Mama, come, no, I see, mamma, bra, mamma, come, mamma, bra. I'm going to give you a lift to wherever you are going. Man came down. Help the woman. Put the children in. The woman sat down. And the man was driving. While the man was going, look into the driving mirror. He saw that the woman was still carrying the load. The reason why he stopped and, and pick her. Sitting in the car. And still carrying the load. Meanwhile, the car is supposed to be the one to carry the load. May the Lord deliver the church from carrying loads that the blood of Jesus has already taken care of. Now listen to me carefully. A father you have been sick doesn't mean you are supposed to be sick. You have the right to resist the devil. And you do so with the word of God. You say in the name of Jesus. By his stripes. I am healed. So devil. Take away. Your sickness. Take away. Your pain. So you resist the devil. Number one. By the word. By the word. That's why Matthew 8, he says, speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. You speak the word. I am the seed of Abraham. Sickness does not belong to me. Therefore, I resist you, devil. I cause the root of this sickness. Go. You cast him out. You cast him out. Use your authority. Use the name Jesus. Mark 16, 17 and 18. He said, In my name, 
So number one, you use the word. Number two, you use the name. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will cast out devils. They will lay hands. You use the name. You use the name. You use the word. And then, you cast out devils. If you are close, to a man of God. He can lay hands on you. And sometimes, most of the time, you have to lay hands on yourself. That's what people don't know. He said, you lay hands on the sick. Now listen to it. So the day you become the sick, you are not going to look for somebody. You are different from your sickness. You are the seed of Abraham. Your body is sick. You will lay your hands on the sick, which is you, and command the sickness to go. Beautiful. So I have pain at my back. I am not the sick. My body is the sick. I am the seed of Abraham. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. My body is sick. So I, the spirit, will lay my physical hands on the sick and I command the sick be healed be healed be healed be healed be healed be healed so whether the pastor is there or not you will lay hands on the sick and command the sickness to go that's how you resist sickness right now lift up your hands I declare your hands anointed. I release the healing anointing in your hands. Everybody watching and those in the studio, let's practice this right now. You lay your hands on the sick. Anywhere there is pain, we command the pain to go from my chest, to go from my knee, to go from my eyes, to go from my nose, to go from my back, to go from my heart. Every pain, go. I resist you. I declare healing by his wife. I'm healed. I begin to talk. <coughs> Command every pain. Command the sickness to go. Now, in the name of Jesus, healings are taking place. Healings are taking place. Healings are taking place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Many are healed. You can touch your television and see the power of God reaching out to you. Lift your hands. Begin to thank him. Thank him. We are going to go to another session. Receive some testimonies. Let's sing one song. I see the healing power of God moving all over this place. Continue to talk to your body. Continue to declare healing. You are the Lord, I heal her. Send your, send your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord. You are the
sent your word, you sent your word, you sent your word, tonight you sent your word, and I am healed, I am healed, I am healed, you are the Lord, you are my healer. Thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you for the choir. Psalm 119 verse 46. We are now going to tell you Jesus is still alive. How do you know somebody is alive? He functions. He talks, he moves. Whatever he used to do before, he's still doing it. It's the same yesterday to them forever. And one one nine verse forty six. Jum or how any doom couldn't teach him what you are nine seeing. I will speak of thy testimony. Sina make us sa a fawa dance de him. Also before kings. I will a hinier and him. And I will not be ashamed. Now many and so we are here to tell you. Tia wahasi have a company be at you. What Dr. Jesus, yeah, Dr. Jesus, why is doing, yeah, or ye in the life of many people. I will nip up a bri a brabum. And what he's going to do in your life today. Yeah, or by your woman, so a brabum and a day. So we, we have a very nice gentleman in the house. Brother Chimbo Raymond. He was healed of truth also. By Jesus. By the power of the anointing oil. And so today we are so blessed to have that nice gentleman in the house. Share with us what Jesus has done in his life. I will testify before kings. And will not be ashamed. Our testimony silences the devil. And brings us faith. So today I'm so blessed to have my son Raymond in the house. Shining like an angel. So let's receive Brother Raymond coming to sharing his testimony. So Apostle, tell us your name and tell us what the Lord has done for you. Papa, thank you very much for this opportunity. Wow. I don't take it lightly. My name is Raymond Aho. Femi Raymond Ago. Uh, in July last year, 2020, July, I fear a I started experiencing a throat pain. So that was the era of a serious COVID-19 issue. Mm. So when it started, I complained to my wife. My wife was scared. She said I shouldn't go to hospital. Because I will be maybe I may, I may be tested positive. So that was the time I also I was also assigned a national assignment to travel to the northern sector. But I said before I go to the operation, I have to go to hospital and know what is happening to me. So when I went to the hospital, the doctor treated me, gave me medication, but to no avail. So I went back again. Then he transferred me to the one of the biggest hospitals. So when I went there, then they examined me. And the doctor told me, See, my brother, you have a truth also. Listen. Then he gave me a medication that I should go. So I took the medication and came and continued to the journey I have to go to north. To north. So I, I took it to the north. I was on the operation taking the medication but to no avail. So it became worse. So I have to go to the nearby hospital. The doctor gave me the same medication but nothing happened. So that was the time we were having 40 days prayer and fasting. So every evening I will be filling Papa online. So, but before then, 
The doctor told me, that my brother, because of this, you cannot eat fermented food. You cannot eat acidic food. You cannot eat oil food. Then I asked him, if you say I shouldn't eat this food, what food do you think I can eat? He said, just go and eat a normal soup. But don't eat pepper. I said it is not possible. So when I came home, I was on the northern sector managing with it. So it became worse. That was in November. So the doctor recommended that I should come back to Accra and see my doctor. Again. So when I came, the doctor said, My brother, Go and take this medication. And the medication costs me 2.5 every week. So when I came home, first week I bought it. Second week I bought it. Then I told my wife, this is one of the strategies why Satan wants to use to siphon my finances. Oh. So if this sickness doesn't kill me, <laughs> so I said I will not buy the medication anymore. So I was believing God for healing. So every day, in the morning when I'm going to work, I take communion wine, apply my anointing oil, believing God for my healing. Until February, where Papa declared uh, anointing service. So when I got up that morning, I became angry in my spirit that today is the last day. I will not experience this thing anymore. So when I was coming, I said today, I will not take this sickness from me anymore. So when I came, Papa was declaring hearing. I received by faith. So after he prayed for the anointing, I applied it on my throat and I took some and I was believing that God will heal me. But after I've done that, I felt like I drank pure water. Mm. So I know God has healed me. But to, to test my faith, after the church service, I didn't go home. I passed back by this church to go and take hot pepper with fermented <laughs> to know whether the sickness is gone or is still there. Papa, lo and behold, I have not heard anything. I went home. I took, I took orange, thinking that it will come. I have not heard anything. The next day, I took banku. I never heard anything. Up to today, I have not heard anything. Wow. And I'm here to thank God for what he has done for me. Glory, 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 glory. Wow. So every week you are buying medicine. Yes, 2,500 Ghana cities. 2, 5, 5, yes. You see how wicked the devil is. So you use all your salary. Buy medicine. And then Jesus. Yes, Christ. Heal you for free. Through the mystery of the oil. There is somebody watching. The devil is siphoning all your resources. This is why I hate sickness. It's not only the pain. It also takes away all your life living. So right now. Anybody going through this same situation. May Jesus touch you right so now. May he heal you right now. May you not be an experiment from hospital to hospital to hospital. Thank God for our brother's testimony. Heal of cancer of the truth. So powerful. To me won't pay you. Lift your hands and thank Jesus for this miracle. Somebody is watching. 
Let your faith come alive. Jesus heals people. And he's going to heal you today. Now let's take our last word from Brother Raymond. Raymond talked to somebody who is sick, who has lost hope, and is believing God for a miracle. Yes, I want to advise those watching us outside there. That whatever problem you are uh, passing through is not above God. Mm. Mm. But only thing you have you must have faith. If you don't have faith, you will think there's no God. But if you have faith, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Wow. So I want to advise my friends. Whatever we are passing through. Listen to what our father is teaching us. And activate your faith. Wow. And God will answer you. Wow. Activate your faith. Activate your faith. Raymond, thank you very much for not keeping this testimony to yourself. Know your testimony will stir many people's faith. And they will be healed. God bless you for coming. Well, we are so blessed. Tonight, once again, we have one of the beautiful ladies in Ghana here in Ghana. the studio. We have Sister Nina Aboka. Heal of Osa. After seven good years. You know, I love Jesus so much. I love him. He does what nobody can do. And I see people who are not committed to God. It pains my heart. But they don't know what they are losing. You are always at one side of the stream. Either you are very close to God. Or you are shifting into the territory of the devil. And I want you to know he's a wicked man. He's very wicked. There's no mercy in his nature. So get closer to God. Jesus will not take your 2,500. He would rather give you more. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more. All these people, the devil has taken something. And when Jesus came in, he restored. So we are going to be listening to Sister Nina sharing with us what Master Jesus, a great physician, has done in her life. So, Sister Nina, God bless you for coming. You are shining in your orange, orange dress so powerfully. Tell the world what the Lord has done for you. Thank you, Daddy, for this privilege. And I thank God for the opportunity. God bless you. In, 2020, uh, in 2013, whilst I was in SHS, I was, I was experiencing pain in my abdomen. By any time I feel the pain, I have to take in water or maybe food so that the pain will subside. So the pain persisted. If I don't get food, I will not be fine. So I'll have to be crying and crawling on the floor. So, so mom had to come all the way from Accra to the north to take me mm. to the hospital. Mm. At the hospital, we ran many tests, but nothing was seen until I was asked to do an endoscopy. So after the endoscopy, the results came that I had um, ulcer. So I was giving medications and I asked that I should make sure I take the medications and eat on time. So I was giving time, like times for me to take my breakfast, lunch and supper. Mm. So within those period, other people were telling my mom like other um, local remedies. So I had to be chewing some grasses, some palm kennels from here to there, just for healing, because I had to 
come home for three good months because I couldn't withstand the pain. Wow. So it came to a point that I had to just um, be addicted to the medicine. And now the medicine was not even working. So I had to go again for them to prescribe some other medicine. Now, so I went and I was asked to run an endoscopy again. And I was told that if I don't take very good care of myself, I'll have to go for a surgery. Mm. But I told my mom that I'm not going for surgery. Because I'm young and I heard that when you do operation, your strength reduces. So I'm not going for surgery. So you pray here now. So what now bathroom? So I my mom had to take me for prayers. After the prayers, we we'll come home, we we'll go look for another local remedy. So it was from there to there. Mm. So after school, I had to still go like to the hospital every two weeks. Every two weeks. Until somewhere 2018, I met um, Mugabe. Mm. 2018, Mugabe. He asked me, like he invited me to church. But I was adamant. I didn't want to. Because I was tired of church. So he like so I told him I didn't have lorry fare. So he <laughs> offered, he offered to pay the lorry fare. Even though it was an excuse. So I followed him to church one of the days in 2018. Wow. And I happened to meet um, numerous of my colleagues at work. So I, I felt comfortable around. So I joined um, the school, the foundation school. Wow. And I, I graduated. So I don't fast. I can't fast at all. So... Anytime daddy declares fasting, I don't fast. Tuesday fasting, I'm not part. So 2020, during the 40 days fasting and prayers. I knew I would not fast. So the first day I ate. But on that particular day, I was having an interaction with Emilia. A friend in church. And she asked, she, then she made mention of the fasting that I asked her, Have you eaten? She was like, Excuse me, she said, Would you eat me? fasting. I'm saying, The So after the conversation over the phone, while I was lying, I was like, So Nina, why don't you put your faith to test? So even if it's not six to six, at least try six to twelve. So within two weeks, I started, I told myself that the next day I'm going to do it. So the next day I started. When it was 12, I, before 12, I prepared Indomie to take. <laughs> but when I was about taking the Indomie, I was like, I'm not feeling any pain. So why don't I continue to maybe even if it's 3 o'clock, wow. then the pain comes, wow. I'll eat. So I was there. So I said the pain wasn't coming, so I continued. Wow. So six o'clock, six in the evening, I came for church. Wow. Wow. Then Emilia was like, "Hey, and then Nina, and what about sorry fasting? Oh yeah." I said, "Yes, me." I said, "Hey." So I continued for the first. So after that day, the next, which was the third day for everybody, and my second day, I, I didn't find it easy. I had to go to the hospital again because I wasn't finding it. So when I went, I was giving the same drugs again. So I told myself that on the third day, I will not do it again. 
I don't know what, what keeps happening, but every anytime I say I will not do it, something keeps pushing me that let me try at least, even if I want to do, let me do it six to twelve. So, the second week of fasting, I fainted at work. Wow. And I was taken to the hospital and I was told that I'm not taking care of myself at all. And the way things are going, they have no other option than to do the surgery. Now, what you mean, what you know, Metishi, Ewo, and Jumamu, now, if you are Democrat, you are a Sabian, you are Simon Shemu, and Suye, and Tinia, and Droni, and Natchez, so pray here, and I was here. I didn't tell mom because she the fact that I exaggerating. Yeah. So, even when they said that they gave me medicine, I came home. I didn't take the drugs. Well, I, mom, I still bent on doing the fasting. Fear so, they told so my I come to them. They told my IC that I, I'm not eating. So my IC nominated one of my colleagues to, be, to ensure that I eat. Yeah, so she would come penny. home and prepare food and make sure I eat. Same so sometimes... Did. So sometimes I have to even bribe her not to tell them that I have not eaten. So the third, like I still bent on, it wasn't easy, but I still bent on. So a time came, it wasn't really easy at all. Now I myself, I said that, the way things are going, let me just end it. At least I've done some. Drew by being maker. So okay, my mini is answer my baby. Something prompted me that what what if I take active? Active has flavor in it, so it will make me feel like I've taken water. Be a Mr. Menomatic in Sio. Sanse, you are Munti, a bear me to say your manum in Sio. So I resorted to the active, and after the active, I was like, I be communion wine is there, so why am I taking the active? So let me just take water and pour the communion wine inside, wow. so that it will be the sweet. same flavor. Oh. So I started taking a communion wine, and there is a guy here called Joe Adam. He also bought me wow. um, a communion wine. So Adam, which so I started taking. Wine, I wow. That's good. But to God be the glory, I ended the fasting, and I had to pay for the one day that I didn't do in the beginning. Wow. I had to we are concerning by one Nadian and I said, Dakuna Mania no Messiaka to me, Yadianane Baco. And frankly speaking, since 2020, after the 40 days fasting and prayers, I haven't even my tummy hasn't even pain. We are concerning by one year, you know, and you have to be a year. Wow, wow, wow. Maybe is it four months or something? When did we do 40 days? Before breakfast, meet. Yeah, wow. The pain has never come again. Yes, you are fine. Very fine. Wow. You are no more chewing grass. Hey, <laughs> I wasn't taking orange, pineapple, acidic fruit. Um, wow. Fermented fruit. Wow. I was only resorted to rice, um, potom potom. Then life soup. Those were the only food I was. And now those things that we were stuck from I'm eating. I'm eating everything. Yeah. Wow. Put your hands together for the Lord. So now we have Sister Nina here. Yes, Sister Nina. Waha. Heal from seven years of ulcer. Can you imagine for seven yes, years money spent in hospitals? Local medicines. And local medicines. And the pain from hospital to hospital. But Jesus came in and healed Nina for free. Even a communion, somebody bought it for her. Wow. He said, I have come that you might receive life and have it more abundantly. There are people waiting on the line for us to pray for them. But listen to me. Healing is children's bread. According to Matthew 15, Jesus speaking to the woman who came and said, My daughter is sick. He said, We don't give children's bread to dogs. Meaning that healing belongs to the children of the kingdom.
Matthew 15, 26. Matthew, so before I pray for anybody tonight, I want you to receive Jesus into your heart. Wherever you are watching us, you are not born again. A mina had not followed to come to church. Probably her situation would have been worse. But she came to church, gave her life to Jesus, went through the foundation school, became now a daughter of Abraham. And Jesus cleared the seven years. Also. So, first things first. I want you to welcome Jesus into your heart. The Lamb of God that take away the sins. Once your sins are taken off, sickness will be the cheapest thing. But watch me. You know if you die today, you will not make it to heaven. Don't confuse yourself with I go to church, I go to church. Being born again has nothing to do with church. A church is for the born again ones. So the first thing is to give your heart to the Lord and allow Jesus to come in and forgive you. Wherever you are watching me, you know you are not born again. Some of you too used to go to church. You have stopped. Totally disconnected. Lay your hands on your heart. And invite Jesus into your heart. <coughs> Tell him. Lord I'm a sinner. Forgive me. As the choir sings, confess your sins. Jesus. Begin to pray. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Forgive me my sins. I am a sinner. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord forgive me Lord forgive me I'm going to be saying Lord Jesus put your hands on your chest I am the Lord Ready to pray with me the Lord Jesus I repent of my sins I am a sinner Forgive me. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Lord Jesus, wipe away my sins with your blood. Lord, write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I'm born again tonight. My sins are forgiven. I am a child of God. Now I declare Jesus is Lord. God bless you. If you are praying this prayer, call any of the numbers on the line. The pastors will talk to you. They will direct you. We will show you the direction of our church. Our church is in Kwame Nkroma Behind the Ghana Commercial Bank Tower. Come to church this Sunday. We have some materials free to give you. That will help you in your Christian work. The service begins 7.45 in the morning. At the first service. And the second service was English and Chi. Those of you don't understand. So 7.45 to 10. And then 10 to 12. We want to see you at this covenant day of healing by faith your life will never be the same the same God that healed Raymond and my daughter Nina will touch your life and bring you healing Father in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray for every sick person I command your sicknesses to leave your bodies right now I want you to touch your television if you are closer the healing power of God 
is reaching you right now. I rebuke the pain in your throat. I rebuke the pain in your head. I rebuke the pain in your stomach. I rebuke the pain in your chest. I command the pain to go. In the name of Jesus. I command the ache to go. In the name of Jesus. Hypertension go. Diabetes be here. Migraine go. Asthma leave. Go it a clear off. Partial blindness be healed. Left ear, right ear be healed. Migraine go. Problem in the face. Go. OBM with the spine. Go. Everybody with waist problem, I command your waist to be healed. And now I come against every incurable disease. High blood pressure. High blood pressure. Diabetes. Diabetes. Out. Any lady having menstrual cramps. As you lay your hands on your waist. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody watching me. I see you having your doctor's report in your hand. You've been diagnosed with a tumor. I command the tumor to die. To die. In the name of Jesus. You go back to the hospital and they tell you the tumor is not there. Every cancerous issue be healed. Ulcer go. Cancer go. Every sickness that has a name I curse you. Lose the people. Let them be free. There is a woman your name is called Densua. You are having a problem. In the night, your eyes come on. And you are not able to sleep. And water comes out of your eyes. Many don't know about this problem. It's a satanic oppression. Mama Densua be here. I command that affliction to be broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is a lady watching me. You are between 25 and 17 years old. There is this satanic affliction. You eat your vomit. When you eat, you vomit it, you eat it back. It's a demonic affliction. Today, be free from that affliction. I command that demon to come out of your body. Now, in the name of Jesus, I command that demon to come out of your body in the name of Jesus. There is a lady watching me. You are not a prostitute, but you have this strong edge that makes you sleep with different men. And after that, you begin to cry. Now, because of that, you are having some problems. What is the problem? You are having this Who's coming from your private part and it's so dangerous that you can't tell anybody. I command that demon inside your body to live now. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. I see God delivering you. Right now the power of God has hit you. You are in your room. You are crying. Come on, you are free in the name of Jesus. And that strong desire is gone. That stinking pose is gone. You are free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for healing, for miracles, for signs and wonders. Thank you for healing bone marrow disease. Thank you for healing people with the spine. Thank you for healing barrenness. Malaria. Every sickness that has a name. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Any weak You are the Lord. My healer. Come on, lift your voice. You are the Lord. You are the Lord.
The favor of God to locate me wherever I am. I want you to I'm know here Jesus. With my case and my husband, our rent will expire next month. Okay. My children's are having faith. Wow. I want the favor of God to locate you. need financial breakthrough. Yes, sir. Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus Amen. loves your family. Amen. He won't allow you to be thrown out. Amen. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the next seven days, somebody will give you money. Thank you, Lord. From right now to the next seven days, somebody will give you money. You pay your children's school fees. It will cover your rent, and some will even be left to start a business. I release the favor of God upon your life. I want you to know Jesus loves you. He won't let you be thrown away. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, send that money right now. Release that money to Sister Grace's house. Let the rent be paid. Let the children go back to school. In Jesus' name, receive this miracle with thanksgiving god bless you god bless you god bless you solomon from amasama brother solomon are you there solomon uh, hello i'm on it you are on it yeah speak i'm also on it um uh, please uh, my leg my leg is spinning me your leg is spinning you yeah. Is yeah. it left or right? Um, the left. The left. Lay your hands there. Yeah. Put your hands on your left right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, I command the pain yeah. in the left leg of Solomon to Jesus. go. I release the healing anointing right yeah. now. Jesus yeah. touch him. Yes, Jesus touch him. Yes, Lord. Jesus touch him. Jesus. Therefore, take your hands. I command the pain. Go. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are healed. Amen. You are healed. Amen. You are healed. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you, Solomon. Keep watching every Friday. Your life and destiny will never be the same. God bless you. I am the Lord. Elizabeth. Sister Elizabeth. How are you, Elizabeth? I'm fine, Daddy. Jesus Please, loves you. I want the fruit. Thank you. I, I want the fruit of the womb. You want the fruit of the womb? Yes. Please. Are you married? Yes. Please. Lay your hands on your stomach. Okay. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you are the baby maker. Jesus. No hospital give babies. No medicine form babies. You are the baby maker. Yes, Lord. According to Psalm 127. I pray for Elizabeth. Jesus. Give her a bouncing baby girl. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Next year by this time, Elizabeth will be jumping and dancing and giving Amen. glory to God. I see you in your white dress in church. You are thanking Amen. God. Amen. Thank you. God is giving you a baby girl. Fair Amen. color, chocolate color. Very Amen. powerful. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For Sister Elizabeth. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He Lydia from Ada. Lydia, are you there? Lydia. How are you, Sister Lydia? 
Lydia to say. By the grace of God. Oh. Do I not do I before now? I don't know if you have a bomb by Jesus. Be ye to me be harassing. I do not do a man in that. You will say free Lydia. So, Jesus. I curse every witchcraft spirit. Jesus. Tormenting Mama Lydia in the night. Take your hands off. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I cast you out. Jesus. And now I dream. My lady, I end not to say, I call her a woman. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For loving Sister Lydia. Thank you, Jesus. I know you are a God of love. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Everyone being tormented by witches. Yeah. Be free tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Your healer. I sent my word. Yes. I sent my word. You want to pray for Ebenezer from Caprice? Brother Ebenezer, are you there? I'm here, Papa. How are you? By God's grace, I'm fine. Jesus loves you. Amen. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Papa, my pastor, and I've been diagnosed of COVID. I can't hear you. I'm, 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 I have been of COVID. Oh, you have what? COVID? Yes, sir. Okay, lay your hands on your chest. Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I rebuke coronavirus. Jesus. You stupid sickness. Leave Ebenezer now. Jesus. Come out of his body. Yes, Lord. I cast you out. Jesus. You dirty spirit coronavirus. Leave Ebenezer now. Amen. Jesus paid the price. Yes. You can't put sickness on Ebenezer. Mm. And therefore, I declare he. He is healed of coronavirus. Amen. Not tomorrow. Now. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Ebenezer, you are healed. Papa. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I bless you. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you. I send your word. We are closing up. You sent your word. And you heal my disease You are the Lord My healer Now, we want to thank everybody who watched Let's, let's pick Fila from Tishi Sister Fila, how are you? Uh, I'm fine What do you want God to do for you, please? Please, um, uh, someone that have I want to marry my sister. After you came, they want to my bad. It's a run. It's very easy for him to go away. But yes, he have not said anything about the marriage. But it's a run. If he's going to be with you. Somebody want to marry you? Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Father, we pray for marital favor from Sister Fila. We pray that the promise will become a covenant turn the promise into something rare pray for marital favor in the name of Jesus and we declare that this marriage will come unto the glory of God amen and amen God bless everybody that is watching we are going to leave you but the presence of God will still be with you I want to invite you to our Sunday coming special service healing by faith wherever you are watching us the church is behind Ghana Commercial Bank Tower it's a mega church there are healings in the church salvation in the church 
And more importantly, the word of God is in the church. Come this Sunday with your family and friends. I'm so excited the brother that invited Nina. Nina said she gave an excuse but the brother will never give her. I want to thank God for all so winners. The people who are always marketing Jesus. As Nina is testifying so has heaven recorded all the goodies of people who brought their friends and family to Jesus So this Sunday, I invite you to church. Don't come alone. Bring somebody along. As Brother Mugabe invited sister Somebody needs a miracle. Somebody needs Jesus. And this is the place. This is the blessing zone. Come with your family. Come with your friends. Let's gather at the feet of Jesus. Who will heal us and will change us. Two weeks from now, we are going to be having our Easter convention. We want to invite everybody. Come join us. Explore the benefits of Jesus' sacrifice. Your life and destiny will never be the same. We are expecting you coming Sunday. 7.45, first service, 10 o'clock, second service. Come for your miracle. Our life will never be the same. I will start to take our offering. It's as we are watching the television. Other believers have paid. Anytime you give to church, what you are doing is that you are promoting the gospel. So we are going to give our offering. But tonight also we have a special meeting in the church. We call it Night of Vengeance. It's a three-hour solid prayer. It's a warfare prayer where we are dealing with forces of darkness. Jeremiah came from Kumasi and gave me a very powerful testimony this afternoon. He took part in the night of vengeance. And one of the wife's uncle has told them that one month after you bury your, your father, if you don't come to the village to do certain things, you see what will happen to you. It's a man of God. We participated in the night of vengeance from Kumasi via social media. It's a one week after the night of vengeance, that man died. The man came all the way from Kumasi, the man, his wife, and three children this afternoon to give this testimony. The one that wanted to kill them died. Tonight, 9 p.m. Who can join us from everywhere? And God will give you a miracle. So give your give your offering. We are not appealing for fans. Let's take care. It is every believer's responsibility. To partner with the preaching of the gospel. Somebody gave Nina Lori Fair. Look at today, mighty testimony. So it is a rescue mission. Give whatever you can give. If you can't give, don't say anything. Give whatever you can give. We put it in the gospel. And one day you will never regret. God bless you. As we turn it over to the choir. As we sing and rejoice in the presence. See you next Friday. See you tonight. See you Sunday morning. And I want to say to you, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Let's sing some praises and begin worshiping the Lord. And thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, we praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle.
hands My Abba And bring something that makes me Come into your presence Oh, Christ, oh. 